Alright everybody, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Every once in a while, oh, every once in a while, I get to show you something amazing. This is one of those times. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, this is one of those times. All right, you're not gonna believe what we did. You're not gonna believe what we did, oh my goodness. <sighs> this is actual treasure I'm about to show you. This is very heavy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Now if this was just a Meiji era charger It would be pretty fantastic for that. Note the border. I mean, just a fantastic geometric design for the border. I'm gonna see if I can't tip this up a little bit so that we can look at that a little better. And there's the charger he came with. Well, I say came with, it's not like it was a bonus. <laughs> Look at that. So I think these are probably wood ducks. There's some type of uh, waterfowl. This is an early Meiji era piece, uh, 1880 to 1900 probably. That's what a very knowledgeable person told me as soon as he saw it. And he said it was an incredible piece. That was before he knew I bought it. There is one tiny, tiny little chip right there um, you know what? It's not a chip. It's a little splash of color. There is no damage on this whatsoever. I'm not sure why there's a little red. Almost as if a petal had fallen off or something. Look at the different shading throughout the background of that ground. Kind of turns from like dirt to green. Look at these beautiful leaves. I'm almost wondering if this isn't gold wire. It could easily be bronze or brass or something else. Look at the swirls in the middle of the flowers. A large open blue background. Nicely pitted and stuff. It's definitely an early, early piece before they figured out how to smooth it during the firing process. So you see all the little wires in like the waterfowl, right? So all those little wires are filled with different colors of enamel. And that little blue duck wing, I mean, that's splendid. I almost swore. <laughs> I, almost, I almost gave that an F-bomb. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Pretty sure that was an imitation of a character from A Bug's Life. Note the uh, bronze bamboo. Uh, border here. I'm not going to touch that much more at all anymore. Oh, and then let's get a look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. These must be Phoenix. So what they did was make a uh, make a cloisonné charger in Japan and then they sent it to France and people in France made it this this gorgeous keeper you know I don't know exactly what this is called it's obviously a stand of some sort um, I think the entire thing is called a compote or a compote note the uh, flathead screw keeping that in there flathead screws were made in like uh, 1770 I want to say 
I'm going to carefully tip this over so we can look at his bottom. <clears throat> Swirls on the bottom for the uh, for the background enamel, and then just a regular blue counter enamel. I mean, this thing's fantastic. Does anybody else like this? Look at this French cast bronze. I love that it's uh, two continents apart and they came together to make this fantastic thing like really fit for royalty. I mean that's that's not a thing you'd typically walk into somebody's house and see. I'm gonna say that that is maybe genuinely a museum piece. That's uh that's not the easiest thing to come by. I happen to see it again at uh you know, I don't get any deals from anybody. I don't I don't tell you about people unless I like them and they did good business and they would have shipped it appropriately. In this case, um, you know, I didn't know him well enough to just trust that, but but I do believe he would have shipped it perfectly and uh so Ian over at Lot 14 Auctions, and you have to bid on his stuff through highbid.com. But he seemed like a pretty good guy. And he sold me this, so I find it difficult to fault him anything. Now, <clears throat> I do feel kind of bad because there was another person bidding on this item. Oh, I love his cast, cast feathers there. I mean, this is... What a miraculous thing, and to have it undamaged. I mean, I suppose you wouldn't have moved this around a whole lot, would you? Let's get another look at his art here. And yeah, I am embarrassed to say that I paid... Oh, I paid about $620 for this portion of the box. Now... <laughs> I, I really feel bad because we had set our budget at, oh, we had set our budget at $400 that's where we were going to stop we were like no we're not going any further than 400 and that would have been way under its value you know I mean it's just that we didn't have $400 to spend to begin with uh, we'd already bought this other charger here so I mean to slap another 400 plus auction fees on top of it well you know we were bidding and just before the auction started because there was pre-bidding available um someone else started bidding on this hard and it got up to like 450 before the even or before the auction even started and then by the time the auction had started it was at 500 dollars, and that was our next bid when the auction had started it was 500 dollars, and <laughs> it's like there's no way we can't we can't we can't we can't do it it is reckless and stupid and then my wife said to me this is this is the positive influence I live with here <laughs> she said well if they want it that bad it has to be as good as you think it is and I said oh no and, and, I, <laughs> and I still I still wasn't gonna bid on it again and she said, do it, get it. <laughs> Usually she holds our bad decisions against me and she's allowed to do that because I show her the thing and then she's like, uh, you know, she's incapable of saying no to it. Now, in this case, she found this item. <laughs> she found this item on highbid.com and showed me and then told me I had to buy it. Ah, we went hard on this one. This is the most we've ever paid for a single cloisonne piece. It's not our most expensive piece, but it is the most expensive piece of cloisonne we own. And it is pretty fantastic, isn't it? Look at that thing. That's like, that was for somebody's castle, somebody's mansion, somebody's, uh, villa in France <laughs> this this does not belong in a house in Michigan with a fat mechanic uh, I, oh my god 
Oh my god. I can't believe we own this. I can't believe I get to show you this. But you know, if I'm going to have a valid channel for antiques, especially cloisonne, sometimes I'm going to have to stick my neck out so that I can show you something incredible. Because we can't just look at bargain basement cloisonne all day, can we? No. This isn't going on uh, best I can afford budget corner. Because, oh, because we don't even have a budget anymore. I mean, <laughs> we're done for like a month. We can't do anything. So, I mean, fortunately, I've got some stuff laying around and I can still show you new stuff. But, but yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a minute before I can actually buy anything new from like $2 to 200 So, I really hope you guys like this thing. I think it's incredible. I think it's actual treasure. Gold gilt bronze from France. Japanese Meiji era cloisonne. Fantastic border. Fantastic subject matter. Fantastic execution. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful piece. I am so happy that I get to show it to you. Perfect little phenox eye on the sides of it. Still has his auction tag and everything. Can you believe this thing? I am in awe of it. <clears throat> so yeah. Between him and his $60 brother back there. You know, and that's all fees included and everything. We spent $684 on this, so, so this guy, this guy was about $620 all on his own. Are you happy I did it? Are you at least happy I get to show you this thing? Like, please, please somebody tell me that I didn't do this for nothing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I sincerely hope someone appreciates looking at this thing almost as much as I appreciate looking at this thing. Oh, if nobody cares about any of this, all this is for naught. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I love looking at this stuff, but there are so many people who buy something like this and then lock it away in their castle, and we never get to look at it again. But you know what I'm doing? I'm buying actual treasure, and I'm showing it to the whole world, so that we don't forget this stuff exists because it's all locked up in someone's castle nobody's talking about it unless your grandparents owned this you didn't know it existed until today because of the best i can afford antiques channel because that's what we do that's why we're here that's why you love us thanks for tuning in and so happy i'm so happy i get to show you this stuff thanks a lot thanks a lot for watching